sound speed. And in this video, I want to speak more candid with you about work ethic. Now, there's a phrase, you're only as good as your last day. And there's something that drives me completely crazy when I hear about it, especially with, I won't, I don't want to make it just a stereotypical young people thing, but the younger generation that comes up, especially those that come out of film school that feel entitled to landing a union show and then they're going to be sound mixing in three years, something along those lines. I'm speaking, you know, also to the older people, the more established people that have this as part of their workflow and they've just never changed. And granted, you can conduct business however you want to. You don't have to listen to this advice or whatever. You can do whatever you want to. I'm just going to tell you something that from my perspective, it's very tacky when you leave a show early. Now, there is a phrase, you're only as good as your last day. If you're not there on the last day, how are you going to leave any kind of impression? If you leave a show two weeks early, the producer, UPM, everyone knows that you left the show early to hop shows. So if you leave early, they're not going to be calling you back. If you're a sound mixer, for example, unless it was pre-planned in advance. If you pre-plan something like a, a jump from one show to another in advance with the producer and you say, look, I have another show booked as of, uh, let's just say August 1st, and this is July 15th, and they start pushing the show back and they start adding more days. And all of a sudden it's the end of July. And you're like, you know what? I have another show that starts August. I got to leave. It was already pre-planned. And if you, the show starts pushing, there's no other way around it. You have to leave the show early. And that was already planned in advance. But when people start and commit to a show and they say, yeah, I'll agree to do that six month long show with you. And then they leave a week or two early because they are offered another six month show. I understand you got to pay your family and stuff like that, but you get a reputation as a job hopper. And I don't do that. What I do is the other way around, as opposed to saying, yeah, I'll leave this show early and start another show and disappoint the sound mixer I did. Yeah, no, look, it's not about rap gifts. I'm not trying to say, oh, stay on there to get your rap gifts. Because I mean, how many shirts, hats, and jackets do you really need? When I first started off for the first two years, I didn't get any, uh, any swag at all on the shows I was working on. These are union shows too. They just, I happened to, to hit a streak of shows that never gave them out. And so I wanted to wear swag on set. Well, now I wear basically the same clothes every single day, uniform. And whenever I get new swag, I'll just add it on top of my, my clean clothes pile that I wear on the weekend. And then when I get a new piece, uh, a new piece of swag or something like that, I replace or just put, you know, when I clean them, I put them back on the pile and the older stuff gets buried. And then all of a sudden, whenever I move or whenever something comes up, I'm like, oh, look at this. Oh, I remember this shirt. I remember this shirt. I remember this. I remember getting this. And that's kind of cool. But you fill up your house with swag. So don't think about it from the swag point of view of if I don't finish the show, I'm not going to get the swag. People notice if you say you're going to commit to a show for a sound mixer, then you need to commit. Now, there's exceptions here. If you pre-plan with somebody and you say, look, under under certain terms, you're allowed to leave a show early. If a particular sound mixer that you always work with, for example, is taking a break, and then you say to this uh, somebody that wants to hire you in the meantime, well, I'm this person's boom operator. I work with him all the time or her all the time, and she's going to take a bit of a break. If she books another show and I need to, uh, you know, to stay in sync with that particular person – then I will need to leave the show early. And they'll probably say, absolutely, I understand. Because that's your team. You're part of your team. They'll be happy to have you as long as they can. But it also goes the same kind of way as if you are, if you have another show booked already from you know anybody else, if you're not loyal to any particular person, and you say, look, I need to go early because I've already committed to this show. Like, for example, a few years ago, I was on a team when we were doing Stranger Things season two. We had already had a date to start Stranger Things, uh, I'm sorry, Walking Dead season eight. And Stranger Things started pushing week after week after week. And after a while, it overlapped the start of Walking Dead. And so we talked about it as a team. What were we going to do? And we determined that the best course of action would be to send me and the sound utility over to Walking Dead to start that show because they already knew me on set as Boom Operator from season seven. They already knew the sound utility because he had done previous seasons as well. And the sound mixer 
we replaced with somebody who was actually the boom operator, now a sound mixer, who did season one. So he was very familiar with the show. He knew it. And he was going to be happy working with us because we basically ran, ran the, the whole department and he was just, you know, sound mixer. I don't want to say just the sound mixer, but he was. Uh, you know, he was the sound mixer that that had a, a boom operator that was familiar with the show and that had done the previous season or at least over half of it. And then uh, the utility who'd done multiple seasons there. Now, the sound mixer we were working with at the time, he stayed back on Stranger Things to work even longer there. But he agreed that he would stay on until the the – the wrap date as of that particular time, which was like three weeks later. But then the show continued to push and it pushed on like another month after he left or something along those lines. So he agreed to stay there for a couple of, uh, of extra, you know, like three extra weeks. But that was all the time he could possibly give because at that point, you know, Walking Dead was like, do you even want to come back? Or are you trying to use this as an excuse to not come back? He said, no, I want to come back. But it was pre-planned. They had booked us. And so as long as there was the team kind of split apart a little bit and we kept both people happy because the sound mixer stayed back on Stranger Things and made them happy as, oh, well, we're keeping our sound mixer. Replace the team, still the same technical standards and everything is still in sync. Walking Dead appreciated having me in the, in the utility there because we were familiar with the show. They were familiar with us and we still showed that that we were committed to that show as well. So both both shows were happy. Now, that was one example. There was a there was another uh, another example of a movie that I was working out of town. Sound Mixer really wanted to to work with me. I really wanted to work with him too, and the show would not budge on the rate. It's Netflix; they have the money. They could have easily paid me another three dollars an hour if they wanted to, but they were like, "Oh no, it's out of budget. We don't have the money for this." I'm like, "All right, well, look. If you don't pay me my rate, you're not buying my staying power. I'm not going to stay if I'm offered another show." And they're like, "Well, so be it." I'm like, huh, "Okay." Sound Mixer wanted to try to keep me there. And I said, and so he uh, he offered to make good and pay me out of his own pocket. And I said, look, you shouldn't have to do that. The sound mixer should not have to pick up, you know, and pay me for production. He says, you know what? This show means a lot to me. I'd love to have you part of it. I said, great, love to be part of it. But there's the whole rate thing. They're not buying my sting power. And he says, what if I pay you out of my own pocket? I said, that's great. I very much appreciate that. But I, I will agree to stay there unless, until I'm offered another show. He agreed. He said, sure, I'd love to have you as long as I can. So I stayed on at the end of the first week. I got a call at, at a job offer and I accepted it. It started, I had to put in a two week resignation, resignation. And so I did the first three weeks of that movie that, and that when I think it went like seven weeks long and my name's not in the credits or anything, but I had a chance to work with that sound mixer and I have a lot of respect for him. He was a great guy. I loved working with him. I would love it too, but he moved out of the country. Now, Similar thing happened when I was at the end of a show called Greenleaf. I was booked on Halt and Catch Fire season three. And the sound mixer who had hired me said, I need you there for the full six and a half month show for Greenleaf. And I said, okay, you got me. Well, you know, I don't leave a show early if I commit to it. And when it came down to the end, I was offered another four, I think, months on Halt and Catch Fire. And I said, okay, no problem. Now I can't leave Greenleaf early. Because I don't do that. But what I did say is, if you can get someone to do the first episode for me, I'll play catch up. Okay, well, we can do that. So I, I had somebody start the show for me, and then I came aboard. Now, the thing you lose if, if you do something along this line is the potential to be able to negotiate your rate. Sometimes you can still do it. Sometimes they say, no, I'm going to start. I, I want to negotiate with whoever's going to be there at the beginning. And then you're going to come in after them. I, I want to talk to the person who's actually going to be our employee. <laughs> okay, I guess fair enough. You potentially lose some money then if the person that's starting for you does not have the ability to negotiate up high, uh, up to the proper rate that you want to get. Now, on the other hand, you might start a show or, or, or somebody else might start the show for you. You come aboard and they say, no, I'm not going to pay you the same thing. Then they want to be difficult. Oh, well, I have no problem with keeping the previous person. There's There's catches. You just had to be aware of them. But the main point that I'm trying to drive here is when you make a commitment to a show, you don't leave early. Now, I understand if life gets in the way or if you get overly stressed and you're like, I have so much stuff going on in my personal life. You know, for example, let's just say your mom has a stroke and, you know, your dad's no longer alive or something like that. And your mom has a stroke and she doesn't have anyone and she has to, someone to take care of her. And you say, you know what, I'm going to take, take a couple of months off and I want to support my mom and be there for her. 
I don't think there's a sound mixer that's going to say, you know what, you jerk, you're leaving the show early. I'm going to, you know, smite your name or something like that. I don't think that's going to happen. That's understandable. It's a medical thing. Just like it would be if you, if you pre-plan something to leave early, I don't, I, I think if the sound mixer agreed to it, it shouldn't be a problem for you to leave early. There are certain conditions that are okay and acceptable. Like as long as it doesn't catch someone by surprise or you go out and approach someone and yeah, I've been offered this other show or I've been offered a show at a better rate and I'm going to take that. Let me ask you something here. How many people do you think have worked on big hundred dollars $200 million budget movies and have said, well, you know what? I'm really having fun on this Marvel movie, but you know, we wrap in a week and I was just offered a Fast and Furious movie and it's going to go another four months and it's going to have out of country travel and it's going to be a really good rate. How many times do you think you're going to be rehired if you leave that Marvel show early? Do you think they're going to just say, oh, I understand. Fast and Furious movies are really awesome. You are certainly in high demand. We're going to want you back. Maybe, but chances are you're not at that level. You're, and I'm not trying to say, say that from a mean perspective, but you're probably not at the level where you're going to be able to say, well, I can leave this show and you're going to want me back. I wouldn't necessarily agree to hire someone if I were a producer on a big, huge show like that. And I'm paying someone a very good rate and I'm expecting them to be there every single day. And they say, you know what? I'm going to leave early. I wouldn't want him back. Would you? So my point here is when you make a commitment, you stick to it. At least that's what my recommendation is. Because if you don't, word's going to get around. Oh no, he job hops. He's going to hop. Yeah, there's no guarantee he's going to stay with you. You know what? If it's between two people, one guy has a reputation for job hopping and another one has a reputation for staying the entire show. They're both available. Which one do you take? I'd make, I'd personally take the one that I could count on to be there the entire show. Again, you don't have to take this as advice. This is not gospel. It's simply my opinion. But I will tell you, in my opinion, that sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.